Malaysia's foreign ministry has slammed comments made by the North Korean ambassador, calling them false as tension bubbles between the two countries. And as the probe into Kim Jong-nam's death rumbles on, there are some new developments. It appears the North Korean man detained in Kuala Lumpur may have been the contact point for four other North Korean suspects who are already back in Pyongyang. Woo Jong-hee has the story. The Malaysian Foreign Ministry issued a statement on Monday saying that the remarks made by North Korea's ambassador to Malaysia, Kang Ter, earlier in the day are false and deluded. At a press conference after he was summoned to the Malaysian Foreign Ministry, Kang claimed that the Malaysian police's probe into the death of the North Korean leader's half-brother, Kim Jong-nam, could no longer be trusted. He claimed that there must be some other power behind the probe and called for a joint investigation by Malaysian and North Korean authorities. In response, the Malaysian Foreign Ministry denounced the remarks, saying they tarnish Malaysia's reputation and criticized North Korea's diplomatic behavior. Malaysian authorities also said that they had told Kang the local police investigation is being conducted in accordance with Malaysian law. The Malaysian Prime Minister Najib Razak had said earlier that the police investigation is objective and that he has complete trust in it. Meanwhile, Lee jong tar a North Korean man detained by Malaysian police after the death of Kim Jong-nam, is being regarded by authorities as the local contact for the four other North Korean suspects who fled Malaysia on the day of Kim's death. Quoting an unnamed Malaysian security source, the British Daily Telegraph reported on Monday that rearranged the logistics for the killing, including booking hotels, taxis, and setting meeting points. With his doctorate in chemistry, he is also seen to have helped in making the toxic substance that killed Kim Jong-nam. The two female suspects arrested for the crime have told local police that they thought their actions were for a prank on a TV show. The Indonesian suspect Siti Aisha said a Japanese and Malay-speaking man recruited her and told her that as part of the prank, she needed to touch a rich man's cheeks, poke him and put sauce on his face. She said she didn't think there was anything suspicious about it and received roughly 75 U.S. dollars in return. The other suspect, Duan Thi Huang from Vietnam, is known to have told the police a similar story and said she was offered $100 for the task. Oh Jong-hee, Arirang News.